We had a phone call from one of the deputy clerks in the Coast Guard clerk's office. She informed us that our application for partial stay of the district court's judgment had been granted. Um, that application sought the stay of the uh, implementation of the elementary television desegregation plan ordered by the court on August 2nd. Well, if a stay has been granted on the television part, that means no money can be spent for television equipment or the purchase of television equipment to implement that part of the order. That's correct. Part of the stay order entered by the Fifth Circuit specifically speaks to expenditure of funds and prohibits such expenditure um, for implementation of the television program. It's fairly broad. I don't have a copy of the order yet, so I'm basically recalling for you with the conversation with the clerk. But the order did speak to expenditure of funds and did prohibit such until the entire merits of the TASB versus FCC segregation suit is, are decided on appeal. I don't know when that will be. What portions of Judge Taylor's order are left in effect then? If this day concerns television, what portions of the order are still effective? Those portions not concerned with implementation of an elementary desegregation plan. That is, some of the elementary portions are still in effect. Guaranteed performance for students would still be in effect. Um, some portions uh, for shuttle service between the school, that is, the once a week visit with the black class to the white school, can still be implemented. But the portions requiring installation um, or acquisition of television equipment are prohibited. These being essentially uh, differences in the uh, increment payments of the wage package, the expiration date of contract, and uh, certain working conditions which involve restrictive uh, implications for the contractors. We, uh, of course, have been hopeful daily that we were going to be able to resolve this uh, uh, negotiation so as to bring an end to the strike that has been in existence from July the 1st. We have now, as you, you have said, that you have been hoping daily to reach an agreement. Uh, this negotiation has been going on for several months now. Can you foresee that, that it possibly will go on for several more months? Well, certainly, hopefully not, and we feel that uh, the uh, developments to date will be such that uh, we can uh, resolve the uh, remaining items of differences in uh, the near future. As the time between now and the beginning of school gets shorter, the lines at the Public Health Center in Fort Worth get longer. Recently, the school board voted to bring its student inoculation policy closer in line with recent state legislation. So as of now, in order for a student to enroll in the public schools, they must have been inoculated against measles, rubella, rubiola, and smallpox, and must have started the series of three oral polio vaccines and three DTP shots. That's diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, which is whooping cough. In addition, policy now requires a tuberculin test, and upon completion of the DTP shot, a Schick test to determine immunity to diphtheria. Mrs. Phoebe Hummel, in charge of nurses here, told me that Fort Worth is not as bad off as many Texas cities because Fort Worth School Board immunization policy was closer to equality with state law than most cities in the state. However, more than 9,500 persons have started the series of shots in July. Nearly 11,000 have passed through the doors since August 1st, including 3,800 the first four days of this week. The lines and the waiting time is long. The weather is hot and humid, and the fear of the shot is prevalent. But that's all forgotten when, with a smile of relief, the youngsters emerge from the building, and it's all over. Onward to school. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the Move, at the Public Health Center, Fort Worth.
this is contingent upon being able to fully utilize the Emergency Employment Act funds uh, to, in such a way that we can create uh, additional employment, which is the intent of the act, and also in such a way that we can get full benefit of that uh, in next year's budget, uh, some on the order of $500,000. The uh, Emergency Employment Act uh, funds, the announcement of them, came along after we had already put the uh, budget together for submission to the council and too late to make any changes that would reflect that. What is the major cause for the increase or asking of the increase of property tax this year? Is the deal with the airport? Well, that's one of the elements. Uh, the additional uh, uh, funds from tax revenues that are needed to uh, finance the uh, warrants for the regional airport uh, amount of approximately seven cents on the tax levy. It's my understanding that she is improving daily and uh, the doctors are beginning to now feel hopeful that she's going to pull out of this in a fairly normal condition. If baby X does survive, what will happen to her then? If she does survive, uh, we will be looking for foster home or adoptive home for the child. Uh, this is a Mexican American child, and we have we need new, uh, more foster home and adoptive home. Uh, foster homes are for temporary care until a child can be moved into permanent placement in an adoptive home. If anyone's interested, they can contact our agency downtown. Uh, the telephone number is 749-8601. Now the mother was a 12-year-old girl. What <coughs> are the possibilities will, will happen to her uh, after this is all over? There's several possibilities. Of course, Dallas County Juvenile Department is handling the mother at this point. She's under their jurisdiction. As I understand it, uh, charges of uh, assault to murder are going to be filed against the mother. She could be committed to an institution for psychiatric therapy for a period of time. Uh, it's possible she could be committed to one of the state correctional institutions for a time. And the third possibility would be that she might be uh, placed in a foster home herself for a period of time with intensive work done with her. I think that Mr. Nixon is a political animal. I think that Mr. Nixon will listen because I think that Mr. Nixon, if he doesn't do something about the school issue immediately, Mr. Nixon will not have a place as president in 1972.
voluntary non-compliance with federal guidelines. Isn't this kind of getting at the fibers of our very Constitution? No, I don't think, uh, I think this. We believe in following the Constitution. As I stated, we believe in working within the law. When you review the HEW guidelines, you realize that these are unconstitutional. These were written in 1965, and they state that freedom, this was, this, this states that freedom of choice was only meant to be a transitory method. That, that, uh, that they, what, what the plans were for HEW was, were laid out three years before the Green decision that ruled out freedom of choice. In other words, these plans were made prior, so these are illegal guidelines. Now, we believe some of the HUD guidelines are, are not law. I mean, these are just plans made by federal bureaucrats. I mean, these people say, this is what we want. They use federal funds and then coerce you to do what they want to get the federal funds, such as uh, uh, rent supplement housing in all suburbs, such as if you want money for waters and sewers, then you've got to introduce sensitivity training in your school.